In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to run match coverage against Bunch. And this is going to be a little more of an advanced video. We're going to be talking about some advanced adjustments for the adjustment to the adjustment, how to run match as a base defense, and adjust out of it. And for the purpose of that, we're going to be taking a look at the nickel over. Now, the nickel over, in my opinion, is one of the better defenses in the game right now. I actually think it's the best defense uh, right now for a couple of different reasons. Number one, the sheds are incredible. Number two, you basically have to block your running back if you're playing this defense, which is going to open up a lot of coverage possibilities and then number three the sheds as i said before are absolutely incredible so um it has cover four quarters which is going to be the play we're going to be taking a look at today i'm in kansas city playbook if you want to get my nickel over ebook make sure you join my patreon ten dollars gets you access to everything and we're actually going to be dropping uh, some updates to our match defensive ebook over the course of the next couple of uh days because we found some really unique concepts out of nickel over uh that we're going to be sharing with you as far as match coverage Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So Gun Bunch is like my nemesis. I hate playing people that run Gun Bunch because Gun Bunch is absolutely uh, a very powerful offense. I have two Bunch ebooks out myself uh, in our Patreon membership. Uh, but I want to go over this. Washington is kind of the meta right now, um, and we do have a Washington ebook. But I want to go over this real quick. So cover four quarters. We're going to show you um, the best match beater in the game. So literally all you're going to do is you're going to corner out this solo receiver, or not solo, but this outside bunch receiver. And as you see, there will be nobody on the slot receiver. As you see right there, slot receiver wide open for a touchdown, okay? Now, the problem is the slot receiver is also one of the most important receivers in the bunch offense because it's the receiver that gets open the best, typically against man-to-man -man coverage. So let's say that they were on a concept like this. The corner route to R1 is really, really significantly effective uh, against man coverage. Bunch Trail, for example, would be a play uh, that they might want to go to. Now, the other problem with this, and I'm not going to be able to show it as good uh, here, so hopefully just bear with me, but I'm going to block or uh, zone out on my lineman, but I'm going to put a deep half over here. This is a common adjustment people like to do. When you run bunch to the short side this year, uh, just like last year, it kind of dumbs out this deep half. And as you can see, I'm able to bomb the deep half over the top. So we can't deep half. That's not really a great solution to stopping this bomb. Um, it's not really a great solution to stopping this formation. And the other, and the main reason why that's not a great uh, solution is let's say they go with something like this, you know, just a standard, uh, you know, three receiver uh, flood, and we go ahead and, you know, deep half this defender, you're going to notice a whole other slew of problems that we're going to get. As you can see right here, this corner route is going to be wide open to the sideline. So the thing that match coverage wasn't designed to stop in bunch is corner routes. It's one of the main reasons you call this. Corner routes get open, and if it's not the corner route, then you could be dealing with a streak. For example, let me give you another little match beater just for fun here. Um, so we're going to put the tight end on, um, you know, like a little little post or whatever. Corner route to Jones, and then we're just going to streak Godwin. So you see here, um, there's nothing too special about this, but you'll see the match coverage is still going to have a lot of problems. It doesn't have to just be this glitchy fade at a clear out. You can bomb match all kinds of different ways. Um, at a bunch. It's why I absolutely hate hating, uh, hate facing people uh, that run bunch. It's also why um, it's not a really a, a mistake that a lot of the best players in the world run bunch because of stuff like this. It limits what you can do defensively and it forces you to adapt. Uh, last match beater I want to share with you is uh, actually I got to go grab it and then we'll jump back into clear out but I do want to show you this other match beater um, real quick and this is verts so it's four verticals and basically the match coverage will struggle to defend these wheels so you just streak circle or streak rb and you're going to see here that we're going to throw a d-line pick which is what we so that's why you run nickel over you're going to get a lot of d-line picks um but seriously what you should see here and i'll, I'll streak uh, r1 i'll streak r1 so you see here again a lot of times these streaks will just run by the match coverage literally they'll just completely you know bypass the match coverage not as bad here i think i need to be wide side so i'll just flip the play uh for you guys just want to show you this simple match bomb i think this is better wide side yeah you see how he just runs right down the seam 
So there's so many ways to bomb match, okay? Um, but I still hold that match is the best of all worlds when it comes to defense. The reason why is because it's zone and man coverage. It combines the two, right? And so we want to figure out how do you run match and be effective, okay, against bunch. Glad you asked. Glad you showed up to the video. Let's talk about it. Let me go grab clear out, and then we're going to talk about how you cannot get completely nuked um, in match. So if they know you're in match, they're going to set up a match beater. One of the ways they're going to do that is through clear out, especially if they're in Washington. So they're going to do something like this. This is the gist of a basic match beater that you're going to see. So all we're going to do is in quarters, this is a rule that I gave you guys last year that I thought was actually really helpful. Whenever you're finding issues in match coverage, when the coverage starts to bug out, what you wanna do is you wanna man up the problem player on the field. In bunch, normally speaking, the problem player is the tight end. He's the guy that this coverage has a hard time handling whenever he runs a vertical route. So we're gonna man up the safety on the left side onto the tight end. I want you to see, we're just gonna test this out together. What you're gonna see here is we will actually be able to kinda play the, the glitchy fade on the right. So we're actually able to somewhat stop this bomb just by simply manning up the tight end. Now, um, you have to test this against different bombs and different beaters, but as you see right here, uh-oh, it didn't work that time. Now, another thing that's important to understand about match is sometimes press can make it worse, sometimes press can make it better. So now we're gonna try something else. So now we're going to man up the tight end, and then we're gonna take this uh, corner, slot corner, put him in a curl flat. And what you should see here is now he's not in a quarter flat, so he's not gonna reroute, or he's not gonna reroute as badly, and it's going to allow the match coverage to actually be able to read and react to the player. Now, obviously we wanna click on, make a play there. If you put um, the best ability for match coverage, and you want to have this on all four of your guys if you want to play match coverage. If you're going to do a lot of cross manning stuff, I recommend inside shades on both your safeties. That's what I use. But if you're not, if you're wanting to kind of run just the match coverage stuff, make sure you use deep out zone KO. They will knock stuff like that out um, significantly better. So manning up the tight end is a great way to be able to handle some of the bombs that we're gonna see. Let me give you another, that one I showed you a second ago with the post for the tight end. You're gonna see right here again, we're able to guard this route without having to deep half. Why don't you want a deep half? Number one, you don't want a deep half because deep halves are really easy to bomb this year. And then number two, you don't want a deep half because it messes with match principles. In match coverage, this is just my principle for you guys, it's better to man people up individually than to drop additional zones when possible because especially from the back four of quarters, the back four players, you don't really want to be putting them in like a third uh, if you can help it because their match principles are going to kind of begin to bug the more you do stuff like that. So um, um, you, you want to go into practice mode. You want to mess around with adjusting your match. So you see here, we can do something like this at the tight end. Now, another thing that we can do, um, let's show you. So we talked about the curl flat adjustment to this uh, backside receiver. So what problems you might think, so what, what problems can this create? Well, one of the problems that we could probably get is if we get a concept that looks somewhat like this. Why? Because now this crossing route is going to be coming across the formation and the guy that's supposed to guard it is not there. So what this does is it begins to start to inform you of what you're going to be looking for as a user. We don't want to have to go to the sidelines as a user defender. That's the best case scenario. We want to funnel everything essentially into this box. And that's why I call the cover four quarters essentially a box defense, um, not just against bunch, but actually against a lot of different plays. So if we did something like this, so we cross man here, we curl flat both of these guys, and we bluff blitz the nose tackle so that he can help on underneath routes, um, then what you're gonna see now is even if we get a concept, even if we get a concept like what we just showed you, let's say just like a Y crossing concept, now my user can 
help with this until the other defender can get back on it so as you can see right there that actually looked fairly decent and my user's able to naturally flow to the things that he's actually supposed to be flowing to um help being able to easily help out on the problems um that this formation is naturally going to create now um one last thing with this defense I really recommend messing around with different different players that you can put in different positions. So let me give you another one. So let's say um, that we take, you know, let's say we take our user here. Uh, let's say we take this linebacker, we man him up on the tight end, and then we do something like this adjustment on the left side. So as you see here, we have um, a nice little concept over here on the left side to help handle a lot of stuff. Remember, my safeties typically have inside shade. I'm in the middle of the field here, and we have something like this. Let's see how this does against that curl flat. And what you'll see here is, by and large, this play is pretty solid um, across the board. So mess around with different adjustments, but the basic principle is whenever you're manning someone up, understanding quarters the players you can. If it's trips to the right, then like bunch would be three receiving threads to the right. So we would want to man up with someone over here. We don't want to put either one of these guys in man coverage if we can help it. We want to be using these backside players. So one of my other last little pieces here for you, one of my favorite adjustments is if they're not sending the running back out a lot, because remember we're running nickel over, you have to block your, um, you know, you're going to have to block your running back to stop some of the base rushes we can do. Then we could even do something that looks like this, where we just do something like this. Now that concept that was killing us a second ago, this little Y crossing play, all of a sudden, now you have someone that can actually help on there. Now, he did a terrible job, but he can actually help on there, okay? So, generally speaking, these are just some principles, best practices for adjusting your match coverage and bunch. You know, another thing that you can do from time to time, one of the things I'm starting to become a big fan of is in match, running man on one side, zone on the other side, or, or match on the other side, right? So you could do something like this, where we talked about where you're manning up the back side of the formation, and then maybe even do like something like this on this side. Now, the only thing you are responsible for is any kind of deep crosser uh, from from the bunch side that's the only thing that you have to handle so you know you get a concept that looks like this now i'm able to kind of get back over top able to handle the crosser and you see here that if the match coverage can stand on its own two feet then i can let it stand on its own two feet so anyways those are some simple things that you can do to adjust your match one of the reasons why i really like nickel over is because these two guys are middle linebackers and these guys are safeties and what this allows us to do is it allows us to man them up on anyone on the field so you'll see here i can man the safety up on anyone on the field any of the problems that I want to solve, generally speaking, the tight end. I think that the tight end is really the biggest problem in bunch uh, from, a, from a match coverage perspective. Whenever I'm getting bombed in match coverage, it's typically because of the tight end. There's something that's going on with the tight ends route. So you could do something simple like this, and now you're able to handle a lot of that, right? And then, and then you can have you know your curl flats here for if it's flood. Now, when they motion out, okay, let's say they motion out and they're going to try to throw this corner route to Godwin. All of a sudden, this has become a little bit of a different formation. It's now more of a spread type of formation. And so we still know that the problem in something like this is the tight end. So you see here, they know that they're going to be able to just simply match to this corner route. And you see they play it a lot better. Man coverage actually improves your match a lot of times because it makes it easier for your defenders to actually react to the to the routes because you essentially cancel a player out every time you man somebody up. So when I man up the tight end, I'm canceling him out in the match coverage perspective because they're no longer worried about him running a vertical route or how they're going to react to him because we know we have one defender that's completely devoted to stopping him. You know, if this was trips tight end, for example, manning up the inside slot receiver is a really, really good strategy for defending trips tight end. So anyways, take this with a grain of salt. 
salt. I hope that there was something helpful in this video for you guys um, about ad adjusting and adapting your match coverage. If you like a little bit more in-depth, detailed videos like this, we have a ton of resources for you in our Patreon. I've got a whole ebook devoted to teaching match coverage. We're actually going to be getting into what I call an advanced adjustment seminar series where we're going to talk about some of my favorite adjustments against Matt with my match coverages. I've been trying to kind of get back into that because I would rather play match than anything else in this game um, because of the fact that um, it's just the best of both worlds when you run it properly. Okay? Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you guys next time.